the main role of the environmental sample laboratory is twofold. The first one is that we support the safeguards verification activities by providing the entire sample logistics for environmental sampling and we also transfer samples from the environmental sample laboratory to the so-called network of laboratories. These are laboratories that are accredited to the International Atomic Energy Agency worldwide and they also produce analytical data to us. The sampling kits that the inspectors take along into the field for environmental samplings contain these 10 by 10 centimeter cotton swipes. In general, there are six of these swipes in a sampling kit, so the inspector takes six of these cotton swipes at one area as replicates. So we have basically six replicate samples, which, of which one stays at the facility as a reference. The remaining five are sent to the IAEA in Cybersdorf and we analyze one or two of those and the remaining one or two are analyzed by the network laboratories and one, the last one, stays in our archive in case that there are some differences in the analytical results produced that we can always go back to the sample and do a re-measurement. We analyze for the uranium and plutonium contents in the samples, but also look at the isotopic composition of the two elements, uranium and plutonium. Once we have produced our analytical results in the clean laboratory, then we take those results and compare that with the declarations of the facility. Do our measurement results agree with what the facility claims to be doing, then everything is okay, we are in, in agreement. On the other hand, if we measure, let's say, a uranium enrichment of uranium 235 to 238 ratio in a uranium sample that is beyond what a facility is claiming to do, that would raise a flag because if you enrich uranium to a level beyond what is needed in a commercial nuclear fuel type, then this material could potentially be used for military purposes and this would raise a flag.